Hey guys, it's Katie G, Citizens Investigative Report, and I thought I'd give you a little update on the Iran protest situation and tie it back to Q if we can, which I think we can. So I think there's a bigger picture here. I'm going to look at it from 40,000 feet at some point, you know, looking at the big picture from 40,000 feet. Uh, and I think it's pretty interesting what's going on. So Iran protests, how Trump can strike a fatal blow against the dangerous, tyrannical regime. Okay, we'll get to this. But first, let's let, let's take a look on Twitter um, at the Iran, hashtag Iran protests. And let's see what um, what we can find. threw away her hijab is that how you say it yeah so pictures i mean it's so awesome to see this coming out of the middle east all the you know the persian can't really understand what they're saying sometimes get free middle east iran also lost one comfortable breath this terrorist regime see you can't really understand but you can't get it translated for you but it's just neat to see it all right clashes break out and iran protests here are the kids at Tehran University, um, and they're chanting, we don't want an oppressive government. We don't want mercenary police. It's pretty neat. It's kind of like amazing to see it's day three of these protests, so I'm not going to show that one because it's from somebody getting shot got shot and they're at the hospital um let's see Yeah, I'm really surprised to see the females in the street there because it's a Shiite community. Iran is mostly Shiites. They have a small Kurdish population, but um, yeah, it's um, it's not real good for women there. So, um, you know, we've seen this before. Under it happened close to the time of the. Um, I believe, if my memory serves me correct, it was toward the end of the. Arab Spring where Iran tried to get in on it and Barack Obama was like no I don't think we're going to help you we hope you get free but nah, whatever um, if you understood the over, the Arab Spring which I'm sure some of you do um, yeah they didn't want to overthrow Iran because we control them and we have since 1979 and I'll leave a link in the description uh, for a video that will can go over that for you so you can understand um, let me know in the comments if you don't understand the Arab Spring because it's very relevant to what hap what happened here. The overthrow of, of Egypt from within the, um, it was a bunch of, I think it started in Tunisia and then Egypt and a bunch of different places over in the Middle East. You know, Libya was part of it there for a minute until we, uh, long story. So let me not digress because that's another whole story, but this is all connected. And when Iran decided to do this, the people of Iran, we didn't support them. Um, and I have a bigger picture to share with you about Iran, but I'll get there. So let's just see what's going on. Death to Khomeini. says uh the the death to Khomeini chance coupled with the taking down burning Khomeini's picture is unprecedented in Iran where criticizing him is a punishable offense bravo to the people I agree so um yeah so that's enough of that let's look at Donald Trump let's look what he said today all right let's see I hope this is loud enough for you forever and the day will come when the people will face a choice will they continue down the path of poverty bloodshed and terror or will the Iranian people 
return to the nation's proud roots as a center of civilization. Yeah, he's not feeling too comfortable. Where their people can be happy and prosperous once again. He's got some, some big ones. Let's just put it that way, right? <laughs> All right, let's see. The entire world understands that the good people of Iran want change. And other than vast military power of the United States, that Iran's people are what their leaders fear the most. And that, that's true of any. That's just true of us. What our rogue government fears the most is the people. It's the same here. Okay, let's listen to this one. The entire world understands that the good people of Iran want change. And other than the vast military power of the United States, that Iran's people are what their leaders fear the most. This is what causes the regime to restrict internet access, tear down satellite dishes, shoot unarmed student protesters, and imprison political reformers. Yeah, he's got big ones, guys. Just saying. It's, it takes a lot to stand up before. Do you see that guy squirming? He's just looking down. <laughs> okay, so I want to share this video with you guys, and I want to show you how to see a globalist in action, okay? Fox News had a interview this morning, and I'm sorry, but I don't know this guy. I've seen his face, but I think he's a new guy. But I have to give some kudos to Fox News because they're at least trying to know they can't discuss pedophilia and the occult and the satanic worshiping and blood drinking and all that good stuff that we all know goes on. That's going to come. We have to red pill the whole world first. We can't just drop that bomb. But I want you to hear the, gu the guest he has on, and I want you to see that this is this is how you can tell that um, Trump supporting this is a very good thing, okay? Whenever you <laughs> upset the globalists, you listen to his arguments. It's so lame, and I really give this guy some kudos. Sorry for that face right there. But look at that. Okay, let's listen. And the Iran protests mark the eighth anniversary of the Green Revolution, when hundreds of thousands braved arrest and took to the streets for democracy. Here's what President Obama said back then. I want to start off by being very clear that it's up to the Iranians to make decisions about who Iran's leaders will be, that we respect Iranian sovereignty and want to avoid the United States being the issue inside of Iran. Compare that to today and President Trump's tweets that you heard about from Steve, then ended with, the world is watching, hashtag Iran protests. Here to discuss, Jared Blanc, former State Department lead coordinator for the Iran nuclear implementation. Uh, Jared, good to see you as always. Is there an opportunity now, if played correctly, to put the Iranian regime back on its heels here? I think there's very little opportunity for the United States to have a controlled influence inside okay. Iran. Okay. We don't really understand. Does that mean we shouldn't try? Senior fellow at Carnegie Endowment for try. the International Peace. We should be pursuing our national interests vis-a-vis -vis Iran's policy in the region, Iran's policy globally. We should not pretend that we understand the domestic politics of Iran hmm. to the extent that statements from the president or specific actions from Washington can have a controlled effect inside Iran. But isn't any effect inside Iran better than no effect? How, how is destabilizing the Iranian regime right now not a good thing for the United States? Well, I think there are a lot of answers to that question. I'll start off by saying that there's no particular reason to believe that anything that we say or do will have a destabilizing effect. Uh, Iranians so why not are, try? Iranians are a, a patriotic people. There's a strong uh, national sentiment. And the idea that, that our influence is somehow going to support the protests rather than undermine them, I think, is, is probably not true. Hmm. More than that, I would say that the idea that it is inherently good or, or, or desirable or necessary for the United States to destabilize this regime is just not true. Oh, well, it, this, is a, this is a regime that supports Hezbollah. This is a regime that hates Israel. This is a, the same regime that has the blood of thousands of Americans and American soldiers on its hands. What's the harm in trying? I mean, this, you know, this was the same arguments essentially that President Obama used in 2009 to not get involved in the Green Revolution. Yet when Hosni Mubarak was under uh, siege from protesters, couldn't wait to come out and say it was time for him to go. Exactly. Why not at least take a chance? Well, I, I think, first of all, you've cherry-picked a little bit the quote from President Obama. 
just like no. President Trump, he also just like President Trump, just like President Trump, just like President Trump, he also called for respect of human rights in Iran. I, I that is absolutely that, but, appropriate but, but, for both on, presidents. He didn't call for the Ayatollah to step down. He didn't say Ahmadinejad was an illegitimate president. Didn't send Bgans to try and help these protesters get their message out and allow U.S. cyber attacks on the Iranian firewalls to let pictures come out. It, a lot of folks would say President Obama left these protesters in Iran out to dry. Why not do something different this time? I think that there is a strong reason to believe that overt support from the United States for protests inside Iran are counterproductive for the protesters. More than just that, again, I mean, if you look at the actual coverage, what we understand is going on inside Iran, it's very thin right now. We do not have enough of an understanding of the politics of Iran to play this game. I mean, I'll tell you that... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Given, you guys I'm got your popcorn? I've, I've, we've understood it since 2009. The question is, it didn't work back then. Iran only became more radical. Their support of Hezbollah only increased. Their support of brutality in Syria only increased since 2009. Well, the, the amount of blood on Iranian hands has only increased. That, that's, so, all he, that's all he, ahistorical. I'm sorry. I mean, so Iran's support <laughs> ahistorical. Iran's, 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 no, 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 I'm sorry. No, but it, why it's not, not try it, something different? It, it, Iran's support for Hezbollah has been a consistent part of the regime's policy since the revolution. And to say that their support for brutality in Syria increased since 2009, well, the civil war in Syria oh, wait, started after why, 2009. Jared, you're not answering my so, question. So is Barack so Obama's support for Hezbollah? didn't work. Cle clearly, it did uh, sorry, not. This, it, is just, this is not the way that po policy is not made by saying a, an impossible goal was not achieved in, uh, in 2000. So it's not worth so trying something new? Opposite. It's not worth and, trying and, something and again new? Achieve, and again, pursue an impossible goal. Okay. The United States uh, is not in a position and does not need to push for regime mm. change in Iran. Yeah, they do. The United we don't, States. Wait, wait, we don't, wait, hold on. We don't need regime change in Iran? No. Fascinating. Okay. Well, because, yeah, okay. your ass would be in jail. Oh, I'm sorry. With you. I think clearly our uh, allies in Israel would as well, at least the folks I, over there I have talked to do. Uh, Jared, appreciate your uh, insights. Thank you very much. Thanks. Good to be here. Good debate. What a load of stuff. Oh, sorry, guys. What a load. What a load. What a load. Right? Can you see the globalists? They're scared to death. Absolutely scared to death. I believe... Uh, let's let's connect all this to the to the I'll, then i'll tell you my final thoughts on it and i'm gonna try to keep it short okay i promise so i'm looking back through um so i'm gonna leave this code this q code fag.github.io for you in the in the description so you can look at these posts yourself a lot of people have been asking me where i get this and so i'm gonna leave it in the description for you so you can see these posts yourself but I, what i did was i did a search on iran on GitHub here, and I did also a control F search for Iran. So if you want to do this yourself for any word, you can. So it's going to highlight the words for me. So we can, let's just go back, and I'm going to try to not, I'm just going to read the posts and let's just let them speak for themselves because I tried to make this video earlier and I just went way too far explaining everything. So I'm just going to go back and, and just read the post. So the first time Q talked about Iran was November 2nd. 2017 at 2 14 p.m and he says would it blow your mind if i told you that barack told you barack obama has been to the to north korea and perhaps there now why did his administration do little to slow their nuclear and missile capabilities who feeds north korea with strategic intel iran what deal was done with iran under barack obama why was the deal sealed under top secret classification why wasn't Congress notified? Why, after Barack Obama left office, all of a sudden North Korea has nukes and tech to miniaturize for payload delivery within the U.S.? What about the NSA, CIA, and DIA, etc., all confirming tech won't be in place for five-plus years? Statements made in 2016. Why is all of this relevant, and what does it tell you? Big picture is rare. So what he's trying to say is, look at, let's look at the big picture from 40,000 feet, right? Let's look at it, the whole thing, and how does this all, what's going on now is part of the strategy. It's a, it's gene, yes, genius. So we're, so let me go on. Uh, post number 46, same day, November 2nd, 2017, 13.44 p.m. He talks about Q clearance. He gives a quote from Barack Obama, Russia Right here. Russia should be viewed as a friendly partner under Section 123 of the Atomic Energy Act of 1954. After agreeing to a nu to nuclear weapons reduction deal and helping U.S. with Iran, who is the enemy? 
I mean, it's crazy. What is continually stated by all Ds? Russia is what? The enemy, right? What did the Russia reset really provide? Clearance pathway to complete the Uranium One deal? Why is the Canadian Prime Minister so important? They never thought they were going to lose. The calm before the storm. It's amazing. It's saying Iran and Uranium One is tied together. Big drop. Um, here's the next post. Say same day. How did North Korea obtain Uranium? How did Iran obtain Uranium? Through the Uranium One deal. Why did Barack Obama send billions in cash and wire to Iran? Supposedly for hostages, not. What or why the cash component? Was the hostage component a cover? Yes. For what? Could any of the cash component be handed off to other people? How many planes carried cash into Iran? Did all land in Iran? And he goes through, you can read this for yourself. I don't want to spend three hours reading it, but it's tying it. I mean, it's saying the Uranium One deal is basically how North Korea and Iran got uranium. So basically, the rest of these posts is a lot of the same thing being reported over, over and over. Iran, the Central Bank of the Islamic Republic of Iran. So they're saying he's making a point that Iran has central banks and who, who controls the central banks. Whoever controls the central banks controls the country, okay, by monetary policy and many other things. Um, he's talking about, he's connecting it to 9-11 here. I'm going to leave, I'm just going to give you kind of an over. This is the big thing here, look at this. He's telling you, Uranium One, Canada, Europe, Asia, Iran, North Korea, it's all connected. Iran deal. Why is this relevant? Reread the drops on North Korea and Iran. And then he talks about, it's really strange. He talks about like some esoteric, occultic, satanic stuff here. Okay, I'll let you guys go and read it. But uh, again, same day, he gives the second time. He says Uranium One, Canada, Europe, Asia, Iran, North Korea. It's the biggest cover up in history. That's why he keeps saying it. Look at all the countries involved. This is why they set the reset button in Russia to pave the way from Canada. Russia's, a, I mean, it's crazy. This is crazy. Okay. I can know I keep saying that. I'm sorry. Here it is again. Uranium One, Canada, Europe, Asia, Iran, North Korea. So the Uranium One deal affected all of these countries, mainly to get it to Iran, and, and Iran gives it to North Korea. Here's another one. What if North Korea had a miniature nuke payload in 2004? What if North Korea had ICBM capability since 2009? What if the previous tests that failed were staged? Why would this be relevant? Who was involved and why? Biggest cover up in our history. And he repeats it again. Uranium One, Canada, Europe, Asia, North Korea. This time he doesn't put Iran, but he's saying Iran deal. Russian reset. It's all connected. Unbelievable. So the last one is this one here, and he doesn't mention it until down the bottom. Um, let's see. Do you not understand the government is being publicly got bottom, middle, top? Hussein, Iran connection. We're just starting to see all of this come out now with the Hezbollah. Oh yeah, this is going to be amazing. So my, so this one, I don't think this is an orange. It's because this one found it here, and I, I don't think that's right. But consumer Iran and Viropax, I'll have to look into that. I don't know what that means. But again, he's talking about uh, cult, how it's all connected, worldwide government control, da -da 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 -da. it's crazy. So, and I know I've said that like four times now, but it is crazy. It is the biggest cover up in U.S. history, in world history, perhaps. Okay. So that kind of like, I wanted you to see how connected all this is with the protests that are going on. The, I'm going to leave a link in the bottom again to show, to give you the history of regime change in Iran and how our, the deep state has been behind every regime change there. The whole hostage situation was a debacle. It was all, it was all, you know, fake news and just insane crazy. But anyway, um. I'll leave the link for that in the description. I'll leave the link to this to where you can get the Q post in the description. And just keep your eye on this. This is pretty in interesting. It's going on over the weekend and the and Trump is is supporting it. 
So that means we've got good guys over there helping. They're probably, you know, helping get pictures out on the internet to, to us of what's really going on. Um, I hope this turns out to be, because if we get control, if we give the control of Iran back to the people, we're not going to have, we cut off, we're going to cut off North Korea. So it's a big, it's a big deal. It could, it could have a really big effect on the Middle East as well. All right. So uh, if anything else breaks, I'll be back and you guys have a great evening. If I don't talk to you before New Year's, Happy New Year. Thanks.